relationship with you, God, and into a life full of your abundance. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. This is officially the last Sunday of the month, so calendars are ready. They're back there on the um, Remembrance of Me table. Grab you one for all things March. <laughs> ready to go. Uh, this Wednesday is the last Wednesday of the month, so that means it's family night. Um, we'll pot like it. I'm thinking something like soup because it's supposed to be super cold on Wednesday. Um, that might be nice to have. And then Thursday, we're doing a community meeting, public forum thingy <laughs> in the, at the courthouse in the basement for the warming station. So um, we'll be inviting the public to come ask questions, to voice concerns, to um, give opinions, give advice. And then, of course, we're going to fill them in on what we're doing, how we're doing it. Um, just because it's a small town, it's easy for people to get pieces of information and not the whole piece. And so hopefully it will help um, make sure there's no misinformation and help make sure that the, the word is getting out as best that we can for now. And then Saturday is the Devoted Conference. Um, we ladies are meeting here at the church at 8, I think as well as I said. So we're going to meet at 8 right here, and then we'll try to carpool and drive together down there. Um, we go every year, and it's an exciting time. We enjoy going. We enjoy fellowship with each other. We enjoy the conference. It's always got something that we can walk away with um, that pierces our hearts. So we're happy to have six going, maybe seven this year. Um, it's great when you get bigger numbers to go as a group, so we're excited to Spend that with you on Saturday. And that's it for the announcements. Yeah. It's like, so I say, and then watch Sylvia slide. <laughs> he got me last week because um, I, w I didn't have my announcements written down, and I was just going by slides, and he skipped the birthday slide, so I almost missed it. <laughs> <laughs> almost. So close. So close. <laughs> We're going to talk about God being our refuge tonight. Um, our, our Part of our focus is going to be in Psalm 46, 1. So we'll go ahead and read that and launch from there. God is our refuge and strength, a helper who's always found in times of trouble. We like this scripture. Um, we like a lot of the scriptures because <laughs> uh, we, we run to God when things get hard. If, if we don't have solutions, if finances are overbearing, if health is, is overbearing, if um, relationships are overbearing. When, when it's rough going, we run to God. We run to God when we get scared, when we're not sure what tomorrow holds, when we're not sure um, if our relationship's going to make it, when, when we're literally scared, like if you watch this here movie and you stayed up all night, <laughs> we, it doesn't matter. We run to God when we're scared. We run to Him when times get hard. We're always running for His refuge because we're taught at a very young age, that's who you run to, right? When you're scared, when times are, are tough, when you're not sure which way is up, when you, you run to the refuge, you run to the fortress and the one who gives you strength. Um, and by doing that, we kind of make um, God a means of escape from this reality. It's a means of escape from the pressure, from the not sure where to go, which way to turn, from the fear, from the, it's a way to escape, from, to run away from that, because um, at our core, we want to be rescued. At our core, we want to be delivered. We don't want to go through the tough stuff. We want him to pluck us out of it, <laughs> to save us from the tough stuff, to save us from the hard stuff, because scripture says over and over, he's a savior, and he's a deliverer, and he's, you know, all of these things in our refuge, and so we tend to use him like that, because we want a great escape when things are hard. We want a great escape when things are scary, and and these scriptures help boost that perception that that is what he is, that that is what he does, that that is what he's faithful to do, that's what he wants to do, and that's what we should rely on him to do. Now, I am in no way saying he can't do that should he choose to. I believe he can, I believe he has, and I believe he will. But I think we kind of misunderstand exactly how to apply that scripture sometimes when we're talking about um, running to God when things are hard, when we talk about running to him to escape, when we talk about running to him to deliver us from whatever situation we might be in. And so we have to start looking at that from the, 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 from the aspect of what does it mean when, when Scripture says God is our refuge. In our minds, we immediately think he's a shelter, right? We think he's, he's protection. He's a shield. He's a savior. When we say refuge, it's because he's going to protect me from all the bad stuff. He's going to shield me from all the scary stuff, right? He's going to save me from whatever the circumstance is. And so refuge means all of those things to us, and that's why we run to him, because that's what we expect him to do. But where exactly are we running to for this refuge he provides? Are we running to heaven to do that? Of course not, because none of us are, you know, laying our world bodies down yet. Are we running into church? No, because church isn't open 24-7. Um, we run to our prayer closets, but let's let's just be brutally honest with ourselves. We leave our prayer closets unsatisfied sometimes. We leave without any clearer answer than when we went, went in. We leave with our circumstances seemingly unchanged. From when we went in, we leave thinking, I'm not sure I've prayed and I trust God, but 
but my feelings in the matter and my attitude in the matter and, and the matter itself hasn't changed. You know, I'm still in the same position and we leave unsatisfied. And, and I think that happens because we are running to God when we're supposed to be running with God. This idea that I'm going to run to God because my situation's hard, or I'm going to run to God because it's scary, or I'm going to run to God because I need a Savior, it, it sounds pretty and it sounds nice, but the truth is, He's already here in the situation. So we're not running to Him. We're supposed to be running this life with Him. Because truthfully, where is He? Well, Jesus said He's sending the Holy Spirit to reside in us. Jesus said He's with us always, spiritually, physically, at lo uh, location, if you want to say in the natural as well as in the spiritual. God's not a place to run to. He's not a building. He's not a refuge, a shelter to run to. He's not waiting for us to get scared or to get overwhelmed or to get frustrated. He's not apart from us watching that, waiting for us to come to him so he can rush in and save us. But that's the, the mentality we get when we begin to think about God as a refuge. Paul tells us very clearly what we're supposed to be doing in this life with God and that it's not to him. That it is with him. 1 Corinthians 7, 24. Brothers and sisters, each person is to remain with God in the situation in which he was called. Uh, scripture says the steps of a righteous man are ordered. They're ordained by God. Every step you take, God planned out. God can use for his good. God can use for his glory. God will use for his good and for his glory. And so if the situation I'm in is hard, if the situation I'm in is scary... I'm not supposed to leave that situation. I've been called to that situation. I've been called to be a victorious, you know, in that situation. I've been called to overcome that situation. I've been called to um, go through it so that I can pull somebody else through it. A lot of times we go through stuff so that we can walk, go back in and save somebody else that may be in the same struggle. It's, it's not, Paul doesn't say you run to God and have him avoid the problem. He's saying you stay in it because God is with you. Remain with God. When you run from the situation, you're running from God because you're running from where he called you to be. You're running from where he asked you to be a blessing. You're running from where he wants to use you the most. You think you're running to God, but when you run from the hard stuff, from the scary stuff, you're running away from him because he's with you in the hard stuff, in the scary stuff. We don't run to him for rescue. We don't run to him for for shelter. We're supposed to remain with him in the situation and, and and maybe that sounds uncomfortable but the truth is I don't care how hard the situation is I don't care how scary the situation is I would rather be in that situation with God than on a mountaintop without him I would rather be in the trenches fighting my way to the top with God beside me than sitting in, in, a, in a hammock on a beach in Hawaii without him I would rather the rough stuff with him than the easy life without him nobody grows that way nobody wins that way nobody um, is influenced or inspired that way we're not inspired by people who are, who are um, uh, in, in the world that these natural inherited millionaires, these people that come from families of tons of money, and they rise to fame and success, we're not inspired by those people. We're inspired by the trailer park kid that rose up against all odds and became a self-made millionaire. That inspires us because it doesn't take a lot to take what somebody else gives you. It takes a lot to fight for what you want because that grows the people you depend on, and it should grow your relationship with God. So let's look at this idea of refuge and shelter that is used over and over in the scriptures in the Old Testament about who God is. He's our refuge. He's our shelter. They're used interchangeably. That Hebrew word in Strong's simply means hope and trust. It doesn't mean a structure. It doesn't mean a building. It doesn't mean provision. It doesn't mean shield. It doesn't mean protection. It doesn't mean any of that that we've come to associate with it. It means to hope and to trust. God is my refuge and my strength. God is my hope and my strength. He's not going to take me out of it, but while I'm in it, he's going to give me hope. He's not going to, you know, expect me to know all the answers, but while I'm in it, he wants me to trust. It gives us a new picture of what he's trying to relay in these scriptures because refuge is not a location. It is a provision of a relationship that blooms with God. It is a relationship that gets stronger when we depend on him. When we're in the situation and we see him start to move, there's a testimony versus if he were just to pluck us out. We'd never see how he fixed it because we're not in it anymore. We'd never see the outcome. Um, we've all been in a theater and seen a movie and, and something interrupted or watched a movie at home and you missed the outcome. You got to, to the climax part, but you didn't get to see that. It drives you crazy. You're reading a good book and you have to set it down before you're done. And you have to see how that ends. Um, I'm doing some auditions for Audible on these on these books and, and they give you just excerpts of the book to read out and there's been several I'm like even if you don't pick me I've got to get that book I need to know how that ends that's not good enough but if we get plucked out of the situation we never get the ending 
We never get the blessing and we never see the victory that he promises to us because a refuge is not going, but staying. A refuge isn't running from it, it's staying in it. Because that's when you see God move, that's where your testimony rises from. We have to live a life with his refuge, with his protection, with his provision, with his shelter, all of those physical things that we try to manifest into that thought. Our life isn't about running to him and letting him solve all of our problems. He can and he will. If he wants to, he's got. But he would rather us stay with him in it. You, you see war movies and you hear the men yell, hold the line. Why? Because you're going to lose ground if you run. Right? Victory doesn't come to the guy that ran. It doesn't. If you retreat, that means you're close to surrender, not winning. <laughs> People who retreat don't come back and win. So living a life with refuge, there is no great escape. There is no easy way to do this life. If anybody deserved an easy way to do this life, it would have been Jesus, and he didn't get it. <laughs> he, he probably had a rougher life than all of us ever will, <clears throat> regardless of our own trials and triumphs. So if, if even Jesus didn't get plucked out by God, if even Jesus didn't get to run away from it and have God shield him, why should we? Because we're called to be like him. And he walked it. He stayed there because he knew every step God was with him. He knew there was a purpose. He knew there was a plan. And he knew God was with him in it. Over and over in scripture it says, be in this world but not be of it. Stay in the situation in which you're called. You don't have to respond to it the way the world does. You don't have to um, engage with it the way the world does. But you've got to be in the world. And if we keep running to God, we're not in the world. We're in our own selfish feelings. We're in our own selfish desires, our own selfish motivations. Unintentional though it may be. Scripture tells us that we're supposed to be a light in the darkness. Well, if we leave the situation, there's no light anymore. How many times are you in a room when people are looking for hope? And if you run from it, they don't get it. A lot of times we, we, don't, we, we devalue our input in a group of people in a situation. Um, we devalue what our thoughts could be. We devalue what our prayers could be in that situation. And we choose not to, to engage. God's with you in that situation. He called you to be in that place at that time for that reason. And we have to believe that and we have to hope and trust that he is with us even in that. Because the, the flip side of if you're running to God, that means you're running from something. I don't, and I've said this a hundred times, I don't, I'm not a big hellfire brimstone preacher. I'm not a big encourager of, of those that are, if that's your calling, you know, hallelujah, there's a place for that. But I don't believe that we should drive people to Jesus out of fear. I don't believe we should get up here and tell you about the rapture and the tribulations and hell and all of the horrible things that can happen in eternity and, and threaten your souls and threaten your, and, and have, drive you to your knees out of fear, out of compulsion of, I don't want to die that way, <laughs> right? That's scary. And I'm not saying any of those things are, are true or bad or false or anything, but I'm saying that fear only lasts a little while. In about a couple of weeks, you're not going to be afraid anymore, and you're going to go back to doing whatever it was you're doing. Love transforms. Fear does not. I want to draw you to Jesus through love and not through fear. But if you're running to God, you're not running to him because you want to be with him. You're running from the thing you don't want to be with you. You're not running to God. You're running from something. Well, then how long are you going to run to him? Till your feelings change. Till you feel like you've got a better grip. Till you feel like you can handle it by yourself. Till you feel like somebody else has got the solution. Till you stop looking at him and start letting the world tell you how to handle that situation. You see, if we run from something, we're never going to get the victory in that something. When we run to God, it's really us running from life. Lord, you gave me these obstacles, these trials, these tribulations, these opportunities to be a light. These opportunities to be a witness. These opportunities to be an example. These opportunities to to praise you, to glorify you, these opportunities to maybe see a miracle, these opportunities to see a blessing. You've given me these, but they're too hard, and I don't want to do them. <laughs> I don't want to do them anymore. They're hard, and I'm tired. We're running from life. These are, these are opportunities. These are not things that God has thrown in your path to, to trip you up or to make you feel guilty or to embarrass you or, or to overwhelm or overcome you. He didn't put them in your path at all, but he's going to walk them with you and show you what a blessing he can make it if you'll just walk it. Unsatisfying prayer time usually stems from no great rescue. When we go to God in our prayer closets and we walk away thinking, I believe, Lord, but still feel the same way. The situation hasn't changed. It's because we want him to rescue us. We're running to him instead of with him. Because if we leave our prayer closets ever feeling like God isn't changing anything, that he's not listening, that things are not going to get better in whatever way that may look like, 
It's because we're running from him. God didn't call us to do that. He didn't call us to have us him pl pluck us out. There's a reason and a purpose for every step that we take. We don't see it. We don't realize it. Maybe we don't even believe it sometimes. But the scripture says that it is. That he plans your steps. He knows before you do the steps you're going to take. There's a purpose and a cause for that. And so when we leave our prayer time with him and we're unsatisfied, it's because we're looking for a rescue. We're looking to run to God instead of saying, Lord... I'm in this spot. I know you have a plan. I know you have a purpose. I know you have a call. I know this can be an opportunity for blessing. I know this can be an opportunity for testimony. I know this can be an opportunity for witness. I know this can be all of the great things. It doesn't feel like it right now. So God, help me see you with me. Help me feel you with me. Reveal yourself when you're with me. And we start praying, God, let me see you with me. I'm not going to leave the situation. I'm going to stay here and I'm going to let you do what you're going to do. We oftentimes say, Lord, take this from me. Lord, make this stop. Make this go away. And then we leave, and that thing didn't go away. Well, because there's a purpose for that. You have a testimony in that. You have a victory to gain, and he's not going to rob you of your victory. We keep wanting to him for this rescue, but the rescue already happened on the cross. We already got the rescue. The rescue was our souls from eternal damnation. The rescue was he is with us. You see, prior to Jesus, God didn't walk every step of their life with them. They had to go through a priest. They had to go, matter of fact, for 400 years before the birth of Christ, God didn't talk to them at all. In the secular world, they called it the Dark Ages, which I think is, is convenient. <laughs> that, that, that the secular world, that the natural historical world calls the Dark Ages the exact same time in Scripture where God didn't speak to man. I think it's convenient that it works out that way. So there were times before the cross, they didn't even hear from Jesus. They didn't even hear from God. They didn't have an, uh, a muttering from the Holy Spirit, a guidance of love. They, they, it was silence. Your rescue has already happened because there's not a day not going to go by that you won't be able to hear from Jesus, that you won't be able to sit in his presence, that you won't be able to reach out and know every thought you have and every pain you feel and every tear you cry is seen and felt and heard and acknowledged by the one who created you. We'll be your pain can be turned to purpose. Your struggle can be turned to victory. Your trial can be made a testimony to the greatness of God, a memorial in your life to what God is, who he is, and what he does for us. Amen. The problem with running to God is we run to him in our prayer closets. We run to him in, in, in altar calls. We run to him in all kinds of ways. The problem with that is, again, if you've ever seen a war movie or read the book of Judges, read in 1st, 2nd Kings, read in Isaiah even, the problem with running to something and away from something is the something you're running away from is usually giving chase. If you're running away from an overdue bill, you running from it ain't going to make it any less overdue. You're just going to get a cutoff notice next. The chase will continue. <laughs> if you're running from an army and you're going to get up in your watchtower, the army's not going to go, oh, they went home. Let's go home. You know, it's not It's not like working with kids playing hide and seek and you yell base. You, you don't get to do that as an adult. That's not how it works. What happens is you run to it and the junk stays around it, and eventually you have to come out. You get starved out. You get weighted out. You get circumstances. You can't stay on your knees in your prayer closet crying to God for 24 hours a day. So when you come out, it's waiting, and lots of times it's worse than it was when you went in because you're wanting to rescue instead of saying, God, walk with me and show me, um, reveal to me, illuminate to me. Guide me. Make me make a better decision. A better. Let me see that there's a better decision. We're not praying for a victory over our struggle. We're praying that we'd be rescued and not have to fight it. Well, why are we so scared to fight a battle he's already won? Because <coughs> we get scared. When we run to God, we lose ground. We lose a little bit of our faith. We're, it, when we are at, on the top of the mountain... And, and life is going well, and our finances are good, and our health is good, and our relationships are good, and our cars drive well, and our boss is really sweet, and our kids are doing fantastic, and, and everything's perfect. We have every faith in the world that God did that for us. We know he, we are his treasured people, and he loved us, and he has blessed us, and we're thankful for that. And then when something goes wrong, and we run to him, we don't have the same faith. Because now it's, oh no, God, take me out of this, because I can't do this. Oh, no, God, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to do it. This is too hard. You have to take it. All of a sudden, the God that was strong enough to give us all of that is no longer strong enough to walk with us when it's hard. The God that we believe is going to win the victory, the God that we sing about on Easter, the God that rose from, from the grave on the third day is no longer strong enough to walk with us in the struggle. We don't, we don't want to do that. 
We want him to be our refuge. Well, the refuge is a hope and a trust. We don't run to him. Life is not attack, retreat, repeat. Life is not, I'm going to go get her and I'm going to fight for the Lord and oh, that's so hard and I'm going to run back to God and then I'm going to come back out and I'm going to do it again and then I'm going to run back to God and I'm going to, it's not, that's the Israelites, right? That's them in a nutshell. They would worship him, they would love him, they would serve him, they would do the feast and they would do the right rituals and they would do the sacrifices and then they would find a pagan god and they would think that was cool and, and they would worship and they would do everything the pagan nations were doing and they would forget how great God was and then destruction would come from that and then they would run back to God and then everything was great and wonderful and then things would get hard again and they would turn to, it was back, it was attack, retreat, repeat. We mirror the Israelites a lot in our own lives when we run to God instead of with him. You see, our lives are supposed to be fight, trust, and victory. Fight, refuge, and victory. Because that's the way it's supposed to be. The, the victory is already won. We've got it handled. We just have to walk through it and trust that he's got it. We should never be hiding in God, only trusting in God. Refuge is hope and trust. <coughs> Excuse me. When we run to him, we're hiding. And, and I admit it, I, I'll probably, even after this sermon, will continue to have moments when I just want to hide in God. We want to get under the shadow of his wings. We want to get in the presence where nothing else, we can't hear anything else, we can't feel anything else, nothing else bothers us. There's something beautiful about being in his presence in that way. But there is something just as beautiful as getting attacked on all sides and watching him still, trusting him still, hoping still that his plan is going to be faithful. There's something beautiful when you watch somebody under attack not be a different person than they were when they weren't. When you see them worshiping God and you see their life going well and you're like, you know, God's blessing them and they figured this thing out and then you see them under attack and they're just as joyful and they're just as big a volunteer and a server and they're just as big involved in their community and, and all of the commitments and all of the things they cared about and that they were passionate about before the struggle remain in the struggle. There's something very powerful for other people. When you and God are alone and you're hiding in him and you're resting in him and you're enjoying that presence, that's for you. And, and that's for God, and he loves that, and that's beautiful, but um, we're here to win souls. Nobody gets to see that. Nobody else can feel what you feel when you're with God. I can't feel that. I can't. I know how that feels for me, but it's going to be different for each one of us depending on our relationship with him. So I can't um, benefit from you doing that. But I can benefit from you running with God because I can watch that. I can see the manifestation of victory. I can see the manifestation of a God who trusts. I can see the manifestation of a person who believes and has hope. I can see the manifestation of glory, of goodness, of victory. I can see how I can win my battles. I can see it. I can have hope and trust rise up in me as I turn to God as my refuge when I see what it looks like when he's your refuge. And it doesn't look like running. It looks like conquering. It doesn't look like hiding. It looks like trusting. And our scripture on Psalm 46 Strength is, is combined with refuge. God is my refuge and my strength. And again, many, many, many times in Scripture, refuge, fortress, strength, these things are combined. It's mentioned because it takes strength to hope and trust that God's going to do it. It doesn't take any strength at all to run. A little bit of speed. That's all you got to have really to run. It doesn't take strength to run. If you are going to God as a refuge, as we can traditionally see it, as a rescue, as a um, removing us from, if you're running to him for that, why do you need strength for that? It's easy to fall at the feet of Jesus. It, it was easy for Jesus to call out to God. It was easy for Jesus to pray. It was easy to do those things. The hard stuff was doing what God asked him to do. He would need strength. He would need the refuge of God, his hope and his trust, but he would need strength to have that hope and trust. He knew that better than anyone. We, we can see that. In the garden, he prayed. It was easy for him to pray with God in the garden. We know it was easy because twice he tells the disciples, wake up, you lazy bones. <laughs> they get falling asleep. Jesus didn't have any trouble staying up and talking to God. That was easy. The hard part was when he said, not my will, but yours. The hard part was saying, walk it with me. Lord, I he said, Lord, if this, let this cup pass. But if this is not your will, my will, let your will be done. Let this cup pass was going, Lord, I want to run to you. Save me. Pluck me out of this. But God, I will stay in the situation that you have called me to because you're going to walk it with me. 
he's not asking any of us to get crucified and, and stripped and beaten and tortured and walked, you know, in the streets. And he'd be like, he's not asking any of us to do any of that. Is he asking us to do tough stuff? Yeah. But it's not tougher than what Jesus did. And ultimately, we're supposed to be responding to that. So when he says, I'm your refuge, he's not saying, I'm taking you, I'm shielding you, I'm preventing that thing from you. He's saying, trust me, have your hope in me, because we're going to walk this together. And in the end, we're going to save the world. Or your little piece of it, anyway. <laughs> and we're going to do it together, because you're going to walk with God and not run to God. He's not a location. He's not something to go to. He's something that is with you in the circumstance we got to quit praying for rescue and start praying for, for revelation. we got to quit praying for, for a hiding place and start praying for strength and power and authority. we got to quit looking for a loophole to avoid it and meet it head on as an opportunity to see his goodness and his glory revealed, to see his victory revealed, and ultimately let it be a testimony to win other souls to heaven. Let other people see this great God. We say he's powerful, but any opportunity he has to be powerful, we want to take away from him. It's not powerful to walk with you when things are good. It's powerful to be in it with you when they're bad and make it good. That's when his power is revealed. But if we tell him, don't make us do that, then the whole world's never going to see he's powerful. They're never going to see his goodness and the power of his love and the transformative power of his grace in our lives if we don't give him the opportunity to do that. Our refuge is not a place to go. It is not a great escape. It is trust and it is hope and it is walking with us every day. Lord, we are thankful that we have a refuge in you. We are thankful that you have a plan and a purpose, God. We are thankful that, God, you are our protection. You are our shield. You are our provision, God. You are our Savior. Lord, there's nothing you wouldn't do for us. There's no place you wouldn't go for us. And we are thankful that we are secure in that knowledge and in that revelation. God, that I pray that we also understand, Lord, that you want to walk the tough stuff with us, that you want your glory revealed, you want your power revealed. God, you want us blessed. You want us to see miracles. You want us to see victories. You want us to see power. You want us to see authority. Lord, you want us to see how much you love us and how far you'll go. God, you want to express your love in every way that you possibly can. And so, Lord, I pray as we become in situations and entangled in, in, in circumstances, Lord, that, that your glory is revealed. And, God, that we see that as an opportunity, Lord, and not as a reason to run from something, but, God, a reason to stay with the power of God, to stay with the authority of God that can transform the situation, that can transform the circumstance, that can transform our lives and the lives of those watching. Let it all speak to your glory, to your greatness, and to your goodness. We pray for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.